locked up, and that was all, you know, that was like the 80s, 90s in Richmond, man. It wasn't, it wasn't no joke. Nah, absolutely. And something I always found interesting about you and something that I really relate to you on now, and I feel like we're going to wind up probably being a lot closer, even though we yeah, was yeah. always cool back in the yeah, day. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. But I was a, I was a loader. You know, I would get really high. I had a strong drug addiction. I, I heard those rumors back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> allegedly, allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. And you, have, have you even ever smoked weed in your life? I've never smoked weed. I've never wow. had alcohol in wow. my entire life. You never yeah. had a sip of beer? like. Okay. The one time when I was probably like, I want to say eighth grade, I think I sipped a wine cooler. Okay. Remember wine cooler? The Boone's Farm yeah, and yeah, all that. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think I, because I thought it was like a Snapple or something like oh, that. Oh, you accidentally sipped it. I, I didn't know the difference. You know what I mean? I just knew it was like, a, I just thought it was like grown people Snapple. I think okay. I was like maybe 12 years it old. It for sure is grown people Snapple. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that was the only time I've, uh, Oh, yeah, that's the only time I've ever, uh, yeah, had did, alcohol. Did you get faded? Did you feel the effects of oh, it? Oh, no, like, I just took a sip. I, I didn't okay, feel nothing at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, at least I couldn't tell at that age. I mean, I had to be like 11 or 12 years old. What was it? Because I know, you know, the Bay Area, people really like to get hot. It's, yeah, yeah, it's that's, a big, that's what we do. <laughs> it's a normalized part of the culture, yeah. smoking weed, drinking, doing way more than that but yeah. at the very least <laughs> a little bit of everything yeah like so how what was it was it your parents like was it a strict upbringing that kept yeah, you I mean, away well, from that you know or? um my, my mother and father they didn't do that they didn't have alcohol nothing in the house they didn't smoke so i never saw that but obviously growing up i feel like i don't know now i know i know people do shit a lot earlier now but i want to say around 13 is around the time mm -hmm. When that's when fools started, mm -hmm. like, that's when I, like, because none of my, I mean, growing up, none of the homies was doing that until you got to be about, like, eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was, like, 12, you know. Exactly. But, 12, yeah. 13, yeah, yeah, 14, yeah. you know, yeah. somewhere around that time. Right. But, like I said, I think basketball was the first, basketball was the first thing, like, I just always wanted to be an athlete. Okay. So, around 11, 12, that's when I was just like, oh, I'm going to be the next Michael Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, I was just like, that's all my concern was. It was just like, I want to be a hooper. I want to be a hooper, hooper, hooper. But then I would say definitely by the time I got to be about 15, that's when it was like heavy. It's like everybody's smoking. You know what I'm saying? Did you feel the pressure or like curiosity? Well, here's the next thing. So I think it was hoop. And then I started saying I'm Muslim. Oh, So okay. that was around the time I started studying, started reading. You know what I mean? Start kind of, I mean, my father is Muslim, but I, I would never practice really nothing like that. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? It wasn't mm -hmm. never nothing I was like forced to do. But by the time I got about... 15 that's when i started like started studying kind of like learning about like that side of my heritage or whatever uh. and then i start consciously studying on my own learning about islam and then i was like okay well that's i don't do that anyway you know <laughs> okay that's real interesting yeah. you know to keep it a stack though i got a lot of I know a lot of Muslims yeah, yeah, that sure. still be getting loaded. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Look, I ain't going to say no names. Yeah, yeah, like, now, everybody to each his own, man. I don't do nothing perfect either. Yeah. But for me, that was something that was easy to give up because I never did it anyway. Okay. So it was like, I ain't got to never start it, you know? Yeah. Uh, and then also, just to be completely fair, like, um, there are some schools of thought in Islam where weed is actually permissible. Right. Or it's not considered... Uh, completely prohibited, maybe discouraged. So it d depending on who you talk to, different schools of thought, you know what I mean? Maybe yeah. like, yo, so, you know, it's no judgment. I just never, it was something that people be like, yo, you know, you can smoke weed. I, I'm like, uh, <laughs> but to me, I'm just like, yo, I ain't never started it. I don't really want to do that shit. So, you know what I mean? It was never like a, uh, not, it was never something I had to give up. Okay. Yeah. Did, did you go to what, Kennedy or Richmond High? El Cerrito or? High. El Cerrito High. Okay, yeah. I know. El Cerrito. Because I was on, you know, Crescent Park. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, on yeah. The, you know, that's right on that border right Near there. Near Central Ave and all exactly, that. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. I, yeah, I used to, man, I used to mess with some uh, young females that were El Cerrito yeah. High alum. <laughs> El Cerrito they, was dope because it was diverse. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah you know what I'm saying? You had, you had, some, you had some hood fools. You had some... You know, some you know, you have uh, some white people from yeah, like yeah. the hills and that Albany uh, kind of area. A lot of different races. A lot of different yeah. Asian, yeah, Filipino, yeah. Like lot, everything. A lot of Filipinos. Mixed. Yeah, to the it got to the point where where my my group of homies all from Oakland. I'm like the only one that's actually from L. A. Yeah. But I was like with them so much, people thought I was. Oh, from, you originally from? LA? I'm born and raised in L. A. Oh, see, oh, I didn't you know see, that. You right? see how it go? Like but you was in Oakland so heavy. Exactly. Like every <laughs> and like, you know my whole squad, all East yeah. Oakland boys and shit. Yeah, yeah. So everybody just assumed that I yeah. was. He, let, let, 
let a lot of people from the town tell it to this day. They're like, nah, he not from, you know what I mean? <laughs> how long, how many years did you live in Oakland? I moved to Oakland in 2001 okay. to like 2013, 14. Okay, and, all right, yeah. and I had always been, you know, like, but shit, like we, we, we mobbed down to LA for events and shit. Yeah, like, absolutely, so, yeah. So I was always in the city still, but like, yeah, no, I was, and became, you know, just, it was my formative years. I was 19 years old. It was like mm -hmm. my whole twenties essentially yeah. was in the town. Yeah. So like becoming a real adult, like man, it was like, in Oakland. Was yeah. in the, it just like Pac said, right? Yeah. Like yeah. you know, he's not from Oakland, but he got his game from Oakland, yeah. and that was me. But we had been uh, MacArthur Boulevard. Exact. Yeah, I was right. I was on a uh, High Street in Mac. Mm -hmm. I was like literally right there in the mm -hmm. East for a long ass time, and to the point where. We were messing with so many El Cerrito girls that it became a rule. Like no more <laughs> El Cerrito bitches. Like it's just like yeah. it's too many it was of them. I don't think I I don't even think I ever messed with any chicks from El Cerrito. I mean, maybe one, but I was like, I think I feel like when I was in high school, we was always going to like San Leandro, you know what I mean? Messing with chicks right. like the San Leandro, Fremont, Union right. City, like, you know what I mean? Hop right. on that Bart, yeah, yeah. go to Bayfair Mall, you know what I it's mean? It's just anything exotic. You feel yeah, me? Exactly. Anything That's like different. You, you you run through all like the the, the homegirls in a circle <laughs> and shit, and like, and yeah. then it's like, all right, it becomes incestuous at a certain point. You're like, yeah. I gotta veer off like shit. I'll damn near go to San Jose. Like, yeah. you, get, you know how it be. But um, so at what point did you realize that you had this? remarkable ability to be a lyricist man it's it's a funny thing uh yeah so in high school i was not rapping at all okay joked around played around obviously everybody kind of played around rapping you know but never ever considered my sister was a rapper really yeah so my older sister was a rapper in the bay her name was mc spice why so, that sound yeah it was this is like 93 right 90 so i remember as a kid going to her shows or go, she she performed at like older sis, older sis, yeah. She would perform at like um, events, like community events um, with Black Alicious, right? Like 40. La Pena and like um, she she was she was doing some big stuff, man. She actually they actually one of I want to say one of the local news channels, Channel Four, Channel Five. They did like a whole thing about her, and she was a dope she was a dope rapper, man. She was a she was speaking on shit. She 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 had like you know it was that era she had the dancers I remember watching her um, rehearse I remember her going to the studio writing her raps in, at the house and yeah. you know, at this time I'm I'm doing hoop you know what I mean I'm completely in the hoop junior high but she's like you know she's doing all this stuff she she travels to Europe wow uh, does a little tour out there um, uh, she tried Easy E label ruthless they wanted to sign her wow but she was more on kind of like some lyric you know like a little bit more lyrical kind of like queen latifah remember how right. queen latifah right. was right kind of like a west coast version of like that you know what i mean and we had like in the bay the conscious daughters and shit like <laughs> excuse me she went to high school with conscious daughters. okay see and that's why i feel like i heard that because you, you know me like i'm a super hip-hop nerd in particular for bay area artists so yeah. like there's even the most obscure like people, like yeah. I've, I'm low key up yeah. on them. So that's you what, probably know about yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what one. So the she first came thing up, I thought was conscious. So daughters. she came. So she came up, even though she didn't do that same kind of rap, but she came up with like you know Pooh Man, right? Chris Hicks, yep. All them, you know. What I mean, she's she's their she's their their uh, uh, demographic that time. But she fucking was, with Dang, exactly with dangerous Dang. Yeah, yeah. Like she was on all that kind of shit. But she was always. Um, she was a little bit more conscious, you uh -huh. know what I mean? A little bit more like that on that tip. And um, she got some offers, but then she eventually um, getting married, having kids, and kind of. Right. And then I want to say, when I started rapping around 2000 or 99 or something like that, um, I remember, i never forget it. It was probably the first time we recorded. So back at this time, I was with three homies. My homie left. Come on, big left. And we had another homie, Hot Lips. Okay. Pause, B. <laughs> <laughs> no offense if you're watching but this Hot Lips. But back in the 99, that yeah. was, you know what I mean? That, that, was, that ain't it, though. That ain't <laughs> it. But it was three of us. So yeah. they had a homie. Um, we had They had a friend. So you know left since back in the back oh, in the... since, yeah, since before rap. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we've yeah. been homies since 12 years old. Okay. You know, and that's my best friend. That's my brother. So anyway, they actually were rapping first. Okay. They was... They, I wouldn't call it like professionally rapping, but they was, you know, going to the homie's house recording. Mm -hmm. I think they went like maybe two times. It's like, yo, Locke, why don't you come over? 
you know, well, I'm, I'm like, yo, what y'all doing over there? Oh, we just doing this rap. I'm like, well, what's that? Well, you don't want to, you know, you sure you want? I'm like, yeah, what's going on, man? I want to try to rap. So they took me to um, the homie Kamal house um, in San Francisco, right over there by Stone Stonestown Mall. Oh, yep, 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 yep. He had an apartment back there, um, and they we used to record. He had literally, it was like, was it an eight? It was like one of you know the, the four little, track, the little four yeah, seven, yeah, yeah. and you record directly into the tape. Yeah, on yeah, 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 yeah. The the Tascam Porter Studio. There you go. That's what it was. Yep. Tascam. So um, they was doing. So that was like some of the first raps. So I've, I want to say we probably I went there like three times. I was terrible. It was just terrible raps. Yeah. But I want to say it was probably kind of intricate. I had all these thoughts. I just didn't know how to put it to the beat. Or flow it. Was it like about girls and shit like no, that? No, it was it was like it trying was to be like some because I was heavily influenced. So that's what I was gonna ask you. What what was you on? Okay. With? So my sister was more she the music that she listened to was more like Easy E, uh, NWA. So I got that. My brother was more on like Big Daddy Kane, EPMD, all that type of shit. Uh Golden Rock Era Kim. Lyrical. Yeah, shit. yeah, yeah. Like the, the New York style stuff. Right. So I would say my influence was like that, but by the time I got to like in high school, um, college, I was more on like Nas, Wu Tang. Right. That was because we about the same age. I'm forty. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. you're right around my age. So I was yeah. like, yo, I wanted like I want to I want to rap like Nas, basically. Yeah. So my first raps was trying to just like be on some dope lyrical poetic shit. Yeah. Um, but I just didn't know how to put it together. Um, but after it, not not very long, like after about a month. You could see like the the you know what I mean because I had never heard myself so when I heard I was like yo why do they sound so much better than me right you know what I mean like because they were just like they were a little bit just you know they had been doing it a little bit longer I had right. never tried it but I caught up pretty fast you know um, and that's why I kind of like developed a style um, that's also a lot of people don't realize this and I, I ain't saying this to Brad but that's also when I started learning how to write without writing lyrics down because mm. at that point we were they were all writing their lyrics down. And in my handwriting, it just their their shit just looked good, and they were they were quicker than me. So what happened was he like I said he he lived behind Stonestown. I would we would go to Stonestown like we would take like a break like we would like the homie would make the beat, mm -hmm. and we'd be like okay that's the beat we want. Then we would like go across the street get some lunch or whatever you know holler at some girls right, right. walk around the mall. But I knew when we got back, it would be it would be writing time. So I started writing the bars in my head. Okay, that's how I kind of started developing awesome Jay Z shit. Exactly, but I didn't even realize it. You know, yeah. I'm just like I got to get ahead. So if I could think of like four bars or eight bars by the time we get back, I can be as they think I'm as quick as them. You know what I'm saying? Right. Because they just write shit. So that's how I kind of started. Then eventually, I just stopped writing it down on paper. They was just like, oh, I was just like, I forgot my notebook. I was like, well, I got this shit all in my head anyway. So I played uh, some of that first demos to my uh, sister, and she was like, yo, this is pretty good. I was like, well, she was like, let me manage you. So my sister was like our first manager. Okay. Yeah, and it was three of us, actually. Frontline was three members at the time. Right, Hot Lips. Lo Locksmith, Left, and Hot Lips, yeah. And Locksmith and Hot Lips rhyme, actually. So yeah, yeah, you know, you know. so it was like, you could always throw that in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And um, so that's how Frontline started. I definitely yeah. want to... It was three of us. So when did you realize... And it's crazy because that right there is kind of the precursor, like learning how to rhyme the w in the way you did. Yeah. That's like the precursor to learning how to battle rap. Exactly. Yeah. And so when I didn't did, know that. Right. But that exactly. Is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When did you? When did that become a thing? Because obviously, oh, this, this is 